for everybody that has no idea what we're talking about, let's do it. I think now's a good time. Give them the Artemis Robotics overview, man. Give it, give us the elevator pitch. Go for it. Yeah, for sure. So Artemis Robotics is changing the way the world moves by enabling lifelike motion in a bunch of new industries. Uh, we've seen the field of robotics and automation try to move forward in the world, right? We've all been promised the rosy robot in the home. Right? Where's like mine? That. I want one. Yeah. Hey, everybody wants it, man. Everybody <laughs> wants it. And even in, in the factory, it's all been promised you know, no one's going to need to do any labor anymore. The robots are going to do it. But go look around and that's not happening because oh. what's happening in the field of robotics is we're, we're advancing AI. We're advancing yes. vision, right? But we're not advancing motion, how to actually move things. Mm. Hardware. Uh, mm. The saying hardware is hard is very accurate, but at Artemis, that doesn't scare us. And so what we do is we have, actually have a new technology, which is a, a motion technology, a way to make things move. Okay. We call it artificial muscles. Uh, and we purposely use that term because we're trying to replicate the performance of human muscles. So we make uh, what's called a linear actuator, something that moves, it contracts or expands or something like that. And we have okay. a new way to do that with electricity and liquids and, and flexible materials. Wow. So brand new concepts of how to get something to move. Uh, and so we bring that to market. We've got defense uh, areas, industrial automation, some other kind of experimental consumer areas that are a little farther out, uh, but really just helping these different industries move more like you and I. That's what so, we're doing at Artemis. So everybody else is focused on the brain and you're focused on CP3O's body, basically. Yep. Everybody's focused on the brain. We're focused on the body. That's perfect. Awesome. You're right. You know, you're right. Where are the robots? We were promised those 20 years ago because I want one for my house that can just do shit, you know, like yeah, the yeah, laundry they're always, and take, take out yeah, the they're trash. Always, they're always 20 years out. Um, but and, and, and there is a lot changing right now. Um, but usually what I say is that, like, what's more important, um, you know, AI that can help me map something better. Right. Like, and that's fun. But I actually want to do the thinking. I like thinking there's mm, a physical task I don't want to do. Um, and so that's really important for us to kind of start working on those problems right now. Good point. I mean, do you have a lot of competition? I mean, I'm just guessing there's a lot of other companies trying to make robot bodies. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. There, there's competition. We, we operate what, what, what you would do if you were kind of categorizing our technology and what we do. We operate in a, in a region called soft robotics. So, okay. so that's one of our key things is our technology is literally soft and flexible. Uh, we take inspiration from nature. Look at yourself. You've got a soft compliant bicep and muscles and things like that. And we yep. think if you start there, you're a lot better suited to go solve different motion challenges mm. rather than starting with metals and rotating gears and things like that. We don't use anything like that. Super radical way to make things move. There are other people working on these type of problems, including other startups now. This has been an academic kind of endeavor for a long time. Okay. Uh, but Notable Companies is a company uh, named Soft Robotics Inc. out in Boston. They're doing phenomenal work with a soft compliant like Gripper, picking up food and things like that. Okay. And then there's a few other folks out there uh, often doing like maybe healthcare applications or exosuits and things like that, but not a lot of traction. Soft Robotics is a very kind of nascent industry. Uh, Inter but if interesting. You, yep. And what yeah. and what's your and what's the model? Are you selling? Are you selling the technology? Are you selling parts? Are you selling eventual bodies of robot? Like what's what's the model? Yeah, fantastic, fantastic question. Currently, Artemis positions itself to be a component supplier. So we are selling pieces of hardware that someone's going to go put into their solution. So it's like, okay. we're the tire manufacturers selling to the car company that then sells their car with wheels on it and everything to somebody else. Okay. Um, however, we have partners where we are a little more maybe a uh, licensee technology sales instead. And okay. so if, you know, there's, 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 we have customers where selling just a component isn't necessarily the right play because the the, the benefit of, of our technology needs to be like integrated really deeply into what they're building and things like that. Gotcha. And so what we do is we do some custom engineering like NRE or something like that, uh, where we kind of set up a partnership and we say, okay, we have these widgets that move, but we're going to make you a really custom widget to make it move a little different. And gotcha. then, I mean, we're a young company, none of that's on market yet, but, but the idea is that they can, they can go ahead and just manufacture it themselves and do a license play or something like that, or, or we can do the manufacturing as well. But the core is making these kind of componentry widgets uh, that people use elsewhere. Very good. Okay. I love it. All right. And then talk to us, what's the size of the company? You've been around a couple of years or almost three years. Yep. What, yeah. How many, yep. how many, how many employees? We got four full-time employees and a couple of interns as well. 
Um, okay. and so yeah, we've been around, uh, we were officially incorporated pretty much at the end of 20 or at the end of 2018, 2019. Is everybody uh, so, still is everybody still working for equity or, or are you or are you making revenue and actually paying people now? Are you yeah, yeah, yeah. We're paying people, baby. We're paying. <laughs> yeah, no, no, we're doing just fine. Uh we actually raised our first fundraise in the middle of COVID. It was always kind of wow. on the map to raise at the beginning of 2020. Um and, and uh I, I was literally traveling on whatever March 12th or whatever out in Chicago. I was supposed to be out in California on the 13th, 14th, uh when, when this whole thing hit. And, and, and it's real interesting to have in, investor conversations uh, the day the stock market made the biggest plummet in like whatever. Hey man, listen, I know there's this pandemic and like, you know, the world could end, but can you go ahead and write me like a couple million dollars check? I mean, would that be all right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, so that was tough, but we're operating in a great space for that. Uh, after everyone, after the shock wore off through March and into April, uh, there was two things that made Artemis an investable company still in the middle of a pandemic. Okay. Uh, the first is that we operate in the field of robotics. Uh, if anything, this COVID thing has taught us how important it is to automate more things. Uh, we remember the food shortages uh, in the grocery store because the meat packing facilities were shut down because the laborers shouldn't show up. Exactly. Right? So let's start getting robots that actually do the things that the laborer used to do. So that was one reason we're in a good, we're in a good industry uh, that's kind of like, like if we if we step back from that kind of uh, scared uh, mm-hmm. uncertain March time frame or mind frame, we see that it's totally fine. Yep. And then second, we're a super early stage company, and so compared to a, a consumer facing company uh, that everybody just uh, lost their jobs and ran out of money, and you know what, I'm not going to buy new shirts anymore. <laughs> right. Uh, we didn't have customers that were going to get disrupted. Okay. Like that. You know, we do have customers, and it has disrupted us. Uh, I don't want to understate that. It is very much slowed down these development processes and projects that we have with customers to get our technology into their application. Um, but it's going to be less impact, impactful compared to. So, we, so somebody so wrote you a check. Right. You raised cash in March. Somebody wrote you a check in March. No, somebody wrote us a check in. We were doing it in March. Somebody wrote us a check in. Uh, I guess it was in, in in May, so we but closed still, it though in but, April. But still, congratulations! That's a big win. <laughs> it, was, it was nuts. It was That's nuts. a big win, bro. I mean, oh, yeah. congrats! Congrats! I mean, really yeah. great, great job. And not only was that a seed round, a round. What we what'd you call that? I had been. We called it a seed round. It was a very small round. Uh, okay. It was under a million bucks. Uh, it okay. was just but enough still. to kind of put some in and, and get us moving, get us operational, yeah. moved us into a facility, and really see where we're at. And and what was interesting about what we did is. At Artemis, we, we, we leverage both investor money. We do have revenue. We've been selling what we call dev kits since day one. Okay. Um, and so we bring in money for thousands of dollars a month type of situation, tens of thousands some months. Awesome. Um, so we've got a little bit of revenue too. And then, and then we got government grants too. We're, we're great technology, an early technology, and the government has programs like SBIR programs and the like to help support that. Uh, so you're... So- so you're burning cash a little bit, but 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 you do have revenue. Is that accurate? We're burning cash a little bit, but we do have revenue. We're certainly not sustainable, and we certainly aren't sustainable as we bring the rest of the team on. Yeah, um, yeah, and, yeah. And, but what the big crux was was we had we had received this grant from the state of Colorado, uh, and and they are saying we're going to write you two hundred fifty thousand dollar check as long as you have a half a million dollars from somebody else. This, the uh, state has this program where they had this like uh, matching thing. I see. And so we had this money that was promised to us. Like we had won the grant and everything and we had to go find the rest of the money Ooh. in order to unlock everything. So we had this, we had this kind of happening in, in quarter two of 2020 where everything was going to be totally fine or totally messed up. Oh. And so that's what was going on. Meanwhile, while you were getting your doctorate and all the things you went to school for, there's no, you didn't take any classes on how to raise cash or talk people into. I mean, you had to learn. I actually did, though. I oh, started okay. auditing some classes at the very okay. end of my okay. PhD when okay. I saw this happening. One of the uh, most uh, kind of interesting classes I ever took was from a gentleman named uh, Brad Bernthal, and he co-teaches it with a, a re- pretty famous investor, Jason Mendelson, a Foundry Group, who, who now retired. Yep. Yep. And so uh, I audited that class, and it was wildly interesting. And it absolutely helped me. Uh, you know, I'm not an expert in fundraising, but I could get up to speed a little faster when people start talking about things. Oh, gotcha. Okay, very good. All right, very good. And so is this all patented, protected? Tech- I mean, can, can anybody copy this? Do you guys have, do you have you spent a bunch of money on lawyers to get this stuff patented? We're, we're- <laughs> yes, yes. We spent a lot of money on lawyers. <laughs> See, you originally spent the money on lawyers and then they tell you, by the way, We'll take, you can help us pay for some of those now. Um, so the company has, the, the portfolio with CU is, I think, six 
pieces of IP deep. And then the company has a couple as well. Okay. Uh, and not, none of it's granted yet, but it's all kind of provisional, but that's to be expected at the stage. These things just yeah. take years to move through the processes. Mm, um, very, most of our IP is really, like I said, we're making motion in a very different way compared to how other people do it. We're not using a, a motor or, or a gearbox or anything like that. We use this, this thin plastic films, we use uh, liquids and we use pretty high voltage electronics. Uh, and okay. that's, that's a unique system. And that's, that's like the core platform technology. We call it hazel artificial muscles. And that's that. what the majority of our IP is focused on. Not all of it. Some of our IP is focused on applications too, but. Do you want to build a, a billion dollar company that's supplying robot makers with all these things that they need? Or are you hoping to get it to 200 million and flip it to Google or Amazon? What's the, or do you, or do you necessarily have that whiteboarded out or right now you're just having fun building it? No, no, no. We're not just having fun. I, I, I always tell my team we're a billion dollar company for sure. We're just a little early today. If you think today's tip or guest interview can help someone, you know, please share this with them. If you've enjoyed today's episode, please subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. The RiderFlex podcast features entrepreneurs, business executives, and the stories behind how they got there, as well as daily tips on career advice and job interviewing. You can visit RiderFlex.com to learn more about us and get information and pricing on the recruiting and consulting services we provide. Thanks so much for listening and have a great day.